The young adult class is upstairs already, so if you're in here, normally we meet for worship a lot of times, but you can go on up tonight, and they'll be ready for you up there, and we're going to start promptly for healing school in here in just a moment, all right? Praise the Lord. Let's give a stand and give the Lord praise tonight all over this building tonight. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just remain standing. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this wonderful night to uh, look at the subject of healing. And Lord, we are so glad that healing is in your plan. It is your will. And Father, tonight as we look at what your word says and uh, we share the things that you have told us to share, we just pray that it will be sealed in the hearts of this class and those watching online, uh, that it will be sealed and it will bring forth great fruit, a great harvest of healing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord one more mighty praise offering. Hallelujah. And uh, greet two or three people there real close to you. Let them know how good it is to see them here tonight. And uh, then as you are being seated, if you did not receive the notes on your way in, Roy has a few copies left. So if you raise your hand up real high, he'll bring those to you. And you should have, you'll get two, well, you'll get a set of notes, and then you're going to get a supplement sheet, just some additional healing scriptures. And uh, I want to, I'm going to, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but each one of these sessions, or at least some of them, I'm going to try to put some scriptures in your hands. I know I don't have to, you'll go find them, right? But uh, I'm going to help you out. Is it good if the shepherd helps you? Amen. So I want to help you with uh, everything that I can on the subject of healing, and uh, so Maybe throughout this, we'll just give some uh, handouts of different scriptures, different uh, translations on some of these uh, to meditate on, to build and develop our faith on the subject of healing. Praise the Lord. Did you find it? Amen. I came without my Bible down here tonight. Can y'all believe that? So, but Paul's a good one. He knew how to go find it. Amen. Now, I'll probably stick right with everything that's in these notes, but How many of you know the Holy Ghost can say, turn to, (laughs) very quickly, and we want to be prepared at all times to be able to turn, amen. Praise the Lord. Are we running out? Roy's running out. Carol had them all up here. Praise the Lord. She needed all of them, amen. (laughs) Just let me give you a note here real quickly. I have no clue why every page is numbered page two. I, I have no idea why. Uh, well, I did it, so I I did my notes. Pastor Patty and I had a, uh, we took off Monday morning and spent Monday uh, 
night and Tuesday night down in the Smokies. We don't get to do that alone very often. And uh, so we decided if we didn't make that happen, it wasn't going to happen. So we just told our children, our, uh, our married child and also our 15-year-old, we're leaving. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I did these while we were down there, and somehow the process ended up different. So by the time they got to our printer up here, I sent them up to be printed to uh, Pam. They ended up all being page two. So... It's not all, it's all different, but each page has a two on it. I know not why, it doesn't really matter, all right? Uh, so, tonight we're going to uh, deal with being skillful with the Word. And uh, you'll find that uh, most everything that we teach regarding healing is going to always have an emphasis of the significance of the Word of God. And uh, if... Uh, I were to receive a diagnosis tomorrow or this week from the doctor of something that would be a, a dangerous illness or a sickness or something that I needed to deal with, the first place I'm going to go is right here. I'm going to go to the Word. And uh, I can't emphasize that enough. So when people come in and say, Pastor, uh, I've been diagnosed with this, the first thing that we will do is point them toward this because this is the foundation this is the foundation and uh, you got to get the foundation right and the foundation has to be on the word of God and so we started last week uh, I didn't uh, bring a set of those notes you probably got them but we talked about basics and I gave you five things that are the basic fundamentals that just have to be settled, things that need to be given attention to if you're going to use faith for healing. And so we're not going to spend any time on them, but we will highlight them just quickly. Uh, the number one thing we covered last week was, I must believe that healing is the will of God for his people. Yes. Is healing the will of God? Yes. Is it his will for his people? Now, you've got to settle that or the devil will talk you out of believing for healing. Number two, we said faith to receive healing always requires the Word of God to be present. You cannot say you have faith if you do not have the Word of God on the subject. All right, so whatever you're believing, you have to be able to see that it is written. It's so significant that you can see it in the Word. So uh, faith to receive healing always requires the Word of God to be present. Uh, number three, I must not confuse denial with faith. Just simply saying I don't have it, well, you'll end up in eternity quickly. I was pretty firm on that last week. But uh, this is probably the number one issue of confusion when, uh, when teaching the subject of faith. People begin to think that when they say I don't have that's faith. No, that's not. Faith is always declaring what I have, not what I don't have. And if I do declare I don't have, I got to declare something in faith regarding what I do have uh, as far as healing that Jesus has provided. So uh, you got to know more than just saying, well, I don't have it. That can be no different than uh, the power of positive confession. And that's not what faith is. Now, faith is a positive confession, Amen. right? But the difference is it's a confession of what the Word says, not just saying, uh, well, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not hurting, I'm not hurting, I'm not hurting, and you're in so much pain you can't stand up. You're, you're denying something, but that's not the release of faith. So if you were not here last week, go back and get that one because we will be talking more on that one in future sessions. Uh, number four, we said I must allow God to give me a specific strategy for every battle. How many of you know the Holy Ghost is the great guide, the great teacher? So what does a guide do? He guides us. And uh, what does a teacher do? He shows us things. And the Bible even said that the Holy Spirit would show us things to come. And so he is our teacher, he is our guide. Now, one of the greatest benefits you have 
is that when any battle comes your way, you've got a guide to get you through the battle, show you how to get through that battle, overcome that enemy. You've got a tremendous guide residing on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit. But uh, you need to give opportunity for the Holy Spirit to give you direction in any battle and especially in a sickness and disease battle. So I need to know what he's saying. What do I need to correct? Do I need to correct anything? What do I need to do? What scriptures do I need to stand on? Uh, What is it that will bring about wholeness and healing and completeness in my life? God knows. Y'all believe he knows? And the Bible says that he will not, the Holy Spirit does not speak uh, of himself, but he speaks that which he has heard from the Father. So it's, it is a, this is a plan that cannot fail. I mean, the Holy Ghost gets the strategy from the throne room for the battle you're in, and God's strategy is the perfect strategy. And the Holy Ghost quickens that, makes that alive in your spirit so that now you've got the insight of what you need to do to make it through this battle with sickness and disease. And again, it's not limited to that. Any battle you're in, get the battle plan from the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, make sure you get the plan. We talked about that last week. And then the fifth thing we said was, Uh, Pay attention to every directive of the Holy Spirit during the time of battle. In other words, whatever he says, do, do it. Somebody said, well, I just don't know why he's saying to me to do that. You don't even have to know why. You just need to be quick to obey. I heard uh, someone ministering. See, again, I listened to so many, but I heard someone ministering uh, over the last week or so. And they were talking about boot camp. Y'all know who it was now. A guy I was listening to, he was talking about boot camp. And uh, I've never been to boot camp. I don't have a desire to go to boot camp, all right? But for those who've been in the military, been through boot camp, from what he was saying, uh, a lot of times you do a lot of things in boot camp that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and you really never use it after boot camp. Does that make sense? And, and he said, here's the reason why. It's not about what you're doing. It's obeying orders. Because if you have to stop and say, now, I don't know if I want to do that or not. That don't make sense to me. You'll get yourself killed on the battlefield. But a good soldier doesn't need or have to know every detail of why. All they know is the commanding officer said, do it. And when the commanding officer says, do it, you just jump in there and do what you're told. Well, when God tells you to do something, you don't understand all of it, just do it. Just be obedient. So tonight, what we're going to talk about, again, is being skillful with the Word of God in connection to healing. Now, there there, there are more functions of the Word. But primarily, there are two main uh, functions of the Word in the life of the believer. There's more than two, but there are two primary, big ones, all right? And so the first one is the Word of God is the seed for faith. So we know that if you're going to have faith, the Word of God must be present. you got to have the Word to have faith. No, no word, no faith, right? We've got that one. I believe we got that settled. And the scripture we use to support that is Romans 10, 17. Then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you have no faith until it comes. And how does faith come or show up? It comes by hearing the word, the word of God. Uh, so... Faith is the seed for, uh, the word is the seed for the faith. Now, faith is important because it is the believer's shield, right? All right, well, let's get to the scripture on that. In Ephesians 6, 16, uh, when Paul was talking about the armor, he said, above all, taking what? 
Everybody say it with a little more energy. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you need a shield of faith. Faith is your shield. No faith, no shield. No shield, fiery darts, make it to you. And penetrate and bring destruction. They steal, kill, and destroy. So what's the remedy against those fiery darts of the enemy? you got to have the shield. What is faith? All right. So faith is the believer's shield. But catch this. The Word of God is essential in creating and activating our shield against the enemy's plan. Uh, now, notice this in Psalm 91 4. Psalm 91 is a very famous, uh, well known uh, passage. But in verse 4, it says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, here it says, His truth is the shield. So, which is it? Is, it the, is his truth the shield or is it faith that is the shield or could it just simply be that both of these we know they're both right because they're the word of God and the word of God's always true right but here's basically what it means you can't have faith without the word you can't have faith without the truth so the truth of God's word produces faith which becomes a shield in the life of the believer so the truth is a shield because the truth will produce faith as a shield and faith is a shield, but faith only comes through the truth or through the word. So truth and faith are your shield. Does that make sense? All right, so the first thing that word is doing, it's, it's sowing faith in your life. The more you meditate in it, faith is developing. Faith is growing. Faith is moving. Faith is coming forth. You're sowing and, and, and growing in faith, developing in faith when you got the word going in. But then, not only is that word a shield for us through the faith that it produces, the word of God is also our weapon during times of warfare. Everybody look up here and say this. Say, the word, the word is, my is my shield, but the word, the word is my weapon. Is my weapon. Amen. So faith comes by the word, that gives you a shield, amen. But now you got the word, which is a weapon. So you're not going to have a shield, and you're not going to have a weapon if you don't get in the book. All right. So Ephesians 6, 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The word of God. So the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Look at the top of the next page, CV version. Let God's saving power be like a helmet, and for a sword, use God's message that comes from the Spirit. So the message is the sword. Or we could just simply say, it's going to be your weapon. And if you don't know any of the Word, it ain't going to work for you. You're not going to have a very good weapon if you don't know the Word. Now listen, you can shake this around. You can lay a hundred of these around your house. But until it gets off of the pages into the soil of your heart, coming out of your mouth, it's not a weapon. And it's nothing more. You might as, if, all, if all you're putting confidence in is the leather cover and the pages, listen, that's no different. The paper and the leather are no different than any other book you have in your house. But when you get the Word off of the pages into the soil of your heart, it now has the potential to come out of your mouth, and it comes out as a sword. We're going somewhere. Stay with us. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, here's what the Amplified said. 
The Word of God is living and active and full of power. So the Word of God's full of power. Word of God's full of power, right? And look what it says, making it operative, energizing, and effective. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. So notice what he said. It's active, full of power, it is operative, it is energizing, and the Word of God is effective. When you got it in your heart coming out of your mouth. It's the sword of the Spirit. And Paul said, uh, back there in Ephesians, uh, what he said there was, he said, taking that, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. So take the sword of the Spirit. You can have it or you don't have it, but you got. if, if you're commanded to take it, that means you got something to do with it. It's not... It's, it's not working itself. Are y'all awake? It's not sitting back and saying, well, the Lord knows all the Word. He is the Word. So if He wants to do something, Lord, I'm just waiting on you. Go ahead and do it. No. You got to take it and do something with it. If I say take something, that, that doesn't mean you just sit there and do nothing. Right? So if I say, take this Bible, he took it. <laughs> right? It doesn't take a genius to figure out this. If the Lord said through the Apostle Paul, take the sword of the Spirit, you're supposed to be taking it. And if you're taking it, you're not taking it to look pretty when you come to church. You're taking this sword of the Spirit to do something with it so it can do what it's supposed to do and according to what the Amplified said, it is full of power and operative and energizing and effective if you'll take it and do something with it. So how do we use the Word in times of warfare? Well, number one, meditate in the Word to build strength for faith in the battle. Meditate in the Word. Meditate in the Word. That's why I'm giving you this sheet. Just some scriptures to meditate on. We may talk about them tonight. We may not. But if, you, if, you got, if you're going to have faith, you're going to meditate in the Word that produces faith. And so you meditate in the Word. All right? Number two, we take the Word of God, uh, take the Word of God in your mouth and speak against sickness and symptoms. So uh, I'm always in resistant mode. Somebody said, what is that? I'm resisting the devil. Uh, just like my body's always in resistant mode, if any germ tries to come in, if I've got good resistance, it'll take care of it. Right? But as a believer, I'm also in resistant mode all the time. Anything and everything the devil tries to send my way, I have a wall of resistance I do not have the welcome mat out. Amen. And so I'll just be honest with you. Over the last few weeks even, a uh, few weeks ago, Zachary dealt with some kind of little virus or something and uh, was out of school a couple of days. And, uh, you know, most people get in the mindset when that happens, well, It'll go through the whole family, you know, and when it goes through the whole family, we'll all get it, and then it'll, then it'll be something else. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, in my body, I could feel that thing trying to come up on me. And, uh, you know, I could have run around and said, well, I guess it's coming up on me. I can feel it coming. I feel it coming. I can tell it's coming. But I want to tell you, I, I just went to resistant mode. So how do you do that? You start using the word you've been meditating on. And you start releasing that word and declaring that word and speaking that word. And when you're doing so, it's coming out not just as a quote, 
but it's coming out as an operative, a, a force full of power to work against what's trying to work on you. Now, this is not limited to physical healing. This is in any case, anything, anything and everything the enemy's trying to bring upon your life, on your family, on your children, you have the right to resist. Amen. Amen. So, this came up in my spirit. We're going to look at this here. Let's see how far we want, where we want to get to here quickly. The process of faith. Bottom of, I would say page two, but it's the second page two, all right? So, <laughs> second or third page two, all right, y'all? <laughs> the process of faith. <laughs> this is a verse the Lord quickened in my spirit during my battle with leukemia. Notice what it says. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, the Amplified Classic, top of the next page. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. Now let's make a confession out of that last part. Say, we believe, we believe. and therefore, therefore we, speak. we speak. Let's say it even louder than that. Say, uh, let's say it again just like I Say, we too believe, we too believe. and therefore, therefore we speak. I like that. Let's do it one more time. Say, we too believe, we too believe. And, therefore, and therefore, we speak. We speak. Now, folks, that right there is the process by how faith works. Amen. We believe and we speak. I believe, I speak. If I if Believing in, alone is not enough. It doesn't come into existence until I speak. We, too, believe, and therefore, we speak. So faith must believe and speak in order to be actively working. If you're not believing and speaking, faith is not working. Now, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, this backs us up with what Jesus said. For assuredly I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. But he believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But notice he three times in there he talks about what you said and then he also talked about what you believe because the spirit of faith believes and therefore speaks. Has everybody caught that? Yeah. All right, now, so catch this. If it is written, I can believe it. And if I can believe it, I can say it. And if I can say it, I shall have it. Is that what, is, what it meant? Is that biblical? If it's written, I have a right to believe it. And if, 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 if I have a right to believe it, then I have a right, I can say it. And if I can say it, I shall have whatsoever things I say. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I've known this for 30 years. But I was in my prayer time this week, early one morning, and the Lord quickened that so strongly to me, I found a place where I've got a half of a page it'll turn, and I wrote it down in my Bible. If it is written, I can believe it. If I can believe it, I can speak it. And if I can speak it, I shall have it. And here's what the Lord asked me. What do you believe? 
What do you believe? Because if you can believe it, you can say it. And if you can say it, you can have it. And so the Lord said, what do you believe? What do you believe to speak? And i tell you what I did. I just started going through here and looking at everything I could get my eyes on. Lord, I believe that. So therefore, I can speak that. If I can speak that, I shall have that. I mean, if it is written, I have a right to believe it, right? If it is written, I can believe it because these promises are covenant promises. They belong to me. They're not just there to look pretty and be something to shout about on Sunday only. If the Word of God says it, I have a right to believe it. And if I can believe it, I have a right to confess it. And if I can say it and confess it, Mark, Jesus said in Mark, I shall have it. Amen. The more you meditate in that, the stronger that will get in you. Because if I can see it, it is written. I have a right to believe it. I don't know if I can believe this or not. And if I can believe it, I can say it. And if I can confess it, I shall have it. Somebody said, what in the world does that have to do with healing? Absolutely everything, because it's the basic process of faith. And that's why the Lord woke me up one night and, and quickened that scripture to my spirit. And I'd been walking around saying, I'm receiving my healing. I'm receiving my healing. I'm receiving my healing. The Lord said, stop that and start saying, I am healed. I've received. Because it wasn't about how I felt, wasn't about how things looked, wasn't about the blood report, wasn't about any doctor's report, the report of the, I saw it in the Word, with His stripes, you were, not your being, you were, you were healed, and if it's written in here, I have a right to believe it, and if I have a right to believe it, I have a right to say it, and if I can say it, I shall have it. I need to go back there and just shout a while and let y'all have church. All right. All right. This is powerful stuff. The process of how faith works. How did you get saved? You heard what the Word said. You saw it in the Word. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You believed it. And then all of us good Baptists knew we had to confess it. Praise the Lord. But if we could see it in the Word because it was written and believe it in our heart and confess it with our mouth, we shall have it. And there ain't nobody talk y'all out of your salvation, right? I believe in healing as much as I believe I'm saved and going to heaven. It's in my benefit package. We're going to just, we may just get raptured on up here. Just <laughs> rapture practice, you know. <laughs> all right, we're going somewhere and I got to get on it. All right. So I asked for permission to use Cal Rudder's situation tonight. Um, come up here a minute, Cal. Aren't, these are just wonderful folk over here, his wife and uh, in-laws, and uh, don't we appreciate them and are so glad they're part of grace. And uh, so he, he's been in a good fight of faith, good fight of faith, because uh, he is, he, he has some diagnosis diagnosis and and things that he's contending with right and I don't know if I have a mic there's a mic in that seat hand me that there just a second and uh, but we're gonna we're gonna focus attention in on one thing in just a moment let's see this there we go but um, just how long have you been now in this this battle that you're in since probably December do this it's, they first called it ALS. Mm -hmm. I've had several doctors say it was ALS. I've lost all my strength in my arms and hands and 
and I've been struggling back and forth with that, and and I've had to, I've got three places in my back that's not good, so I had some shots done, and my back is not hurting, but I've not got my strength back yet. Okay. So I've been going back and forth and battling, with, you know, with that. It's so, been a <laughs> so we are standing against all reports. Amen. Okay. Yep. But we're developing faith for the fight and right. God's strategy. Right. And when you did the shots, we prayed over that the day right. before you right. did that. And I was trying to think what else we had done, but we were praying over all the treatment, right. praying for the right doctors because right. you need the right doctors. Right. Not, not excluding the doctors, yeah. but working with the doctors. Right. And the same symptoms that I got in my back is, is the same thing that, uh, like loss and make you lose strength and okay. stuff. Like it could be just that instead uh -huh. of ALS. Yeah. So, so, but, you know, there's no certain thing to say it's ALS. But I've had doctors say, some of them might say I got ALS. But, but you know, regardless <laughs> of what it is, right. this a, report doesn't change. It's God's will to heal. It's God's will to heal. <laughs> there you go. Amen. Yeah. God's will to heal. Yeah. So, um, and, and, uh, and I'm doing therapy twice a week, and um, I'm doing that hand thing 30 minutes on level three, and I'm doing a bicycle on level six, six <laughs> miles. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> How many of y'all did six miles on the bicycle? And, All right, uh, so. and on okay. therapy, and then um, I'll try to lift weights and stuff, you know, yeah, doing we're that We're going to talk stuff. about that, too. Tonight. And, um. And doing stuff like that. So if, if it's ALS, I wouldn't be able to. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> well, know? but I'm getting my. It's God's will. It's God's will to heal. <laughs> it's God's will to heal. <laughs> so, right. So. And we're developing that here. Right. Right. And getting stronger in that. Yeah. Believe and faith every single yeah. day. Uh, it's been a fight. And, I, well, it is. It's a fight of faith. Uh, it's resisting, yeah. and it's not easy. It ain't. It's I, not the easy. The devil, he no. tries to get in your head. <laughs> he, if you allow him to get in and here, you, you have to, he will take control. You have to tell him to get under your feet. Amen. <laughs> I, don't know how many, I don't know how many times I've had to tell him to get under my feet. <laughs> that's right. And that's how you do it, yeah. right? Yeah. So I want to talk about your situation tonight, and then I might have you come back if we need to, but okay. I just want to take your situation and here's what he told me last week. He told me this last Wednesday night. He said, I really need to regain strength, especially in your yeah. arms, yeah. your hands. Okay? And so tonight, uh, we're going to take that scenario. Mm -hmm. Just as if that were me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some, some thoughts on that. How do you fight to get that strength back? Right. We're going to target faith for that all right so you can be seated and i'll see what we can yeah, you can be seated back okay, there. Yeah, yeah we won't keep you up here all right so uh what i want to do and i've never done this before but i think we're going to do this on a few other scenarios in this healing school what if that what if this was me all right so so if i got the same diagnosis that he had and, but we're not focusing from what he asked me last week we're not going to focus on all the whole picture, every report, everything that's been said, just simply regaining this strength back, all right? So you need to get specific. You need to target whatever area you want to see God move in. My situation was my hemoglobin. So I targeted the blood levels. Very specifically, we spoke and declared things over my blood levels and, uh, there's even a confession in uh, Charles Capp's little book that talks about my bone. It says the bone marrow is producing good blood, and uh, I kind of added to it because I did. What did I do? I got the strategy for my situation. And so I knew where my numbers needed to be, and so I just began to proclaim in faith what those numbers needed to be. And, folks, those numbers went back to what I was believing for, and my doctor was not believing for those numbers. He was believing at the best my hemoglobin might get to 12, 
And now my hemoglobin ranges about 16, 17, very much 100% normal totally with nothing showing anything, any sign of anything relating to the leukemia. So you, you get specific. You know, y'all have heard of targeted therapy? Well, we need targeted word therapy. All right? So, so uh, you, you don't choose just the shortest scripture. <laughs> you're trying to get strength back. Well, Jesus wept. That ain't going to do it, all right? So you're going to have to go beyond the shortest scripture, the easy route. you got to get busy with this. So I thought, that, well, the first thing I would do if I needed to develop strength, I would develop faith for the fight by meditating on promises from the Word. I would find out what is written, all right? Find out what is written. And am I off on my pages? Let's see if I... No, I'm not. Here we are. Page two. <laughs> page two. So <laughs> what I did was I went through and selected specific scriptures on strength. Remember, that's what we're wanting to develop, strength, regaining strength, all right? So the first one, and, I, and this is one of my favorites on this subject, uh, Isaiah 40, verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The CEV version says, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. So uh, notice there it says, they will be strong like eagles, soaring upward on wings. They will walk and run without getting tired. Some of you others need this one. All right. Now somebody would say, well, This is probably talking about spiritual strength being restored, and I can agree with that. But what I found in Scripture is, uh, I think God wants to restore all strength. He don't want anybody to be weak. In fact, I can't find one Scripture where the Lord said, be weak. But I can give you others where he said, be strong. And he told uh, the children of Israel in Joshua 1, be strong and courageous. And then uh, the Bible talks about being strong in the power of his might. I think I've got that scripture for you somewhere. But it's his will that we not be weary and that we walk and not faint. And as the CV put it, those who trust the Lord will find new strength. So what am I going to do out of that verse? I'm going to begin to meditate in that, and I'm going to begin to thank God that my strength is being renewed. My strength is being renewed. It's God's will to renew strength, okay? Now, if you go to verse 29 in Isaiah 40, it says he gives power to the weak, and to those that have no might, he increases strength. So God is a God who increases strength. So I just spend time meditating in that and praising the Lord. The Lord is increasing my strength. The Lord is increasing my strength. You get up uh, barely able to get out of the bed in the morning, but before you, you, your feet hit the floor, you're saying the Lord is increasing my strength. And then you get in the shower. The Lord is increasing my strength. You get out and have your cup of coffee. The Lord is increasing my strength. You have that as the meditation of your heart, and you keep it on your lips. Amen. The uh, Aramaic Bible in plain English said, He gives power to the stricken, and to those afflicted of disease, He increases strength. Boy, I really like that one. Those afflicted by disease, He increases strength. So if you've been afflicted with some disease and you're weak, thank God, those afflicted of disease, he increases strength. Say this right now. Say, he's increasing my strength. He's increasing my strength. Praise the Lord. The uh, NET Bible, NET Bible says he gives strength to those who are tired. And to the ones who lack power, he gives renewed energy. Well, my energy is being renewed. 
Praise the Lord. I said my energy is being renewed. My energy is being renewed. If you're too so weak, you can't hardly get around. You get up and walk. If you can't walk but three or four steps, every step you take, you make a declaration that my energy is being renewed. He's increasing my strength. I'm finding new strength. Now listen, when we, when we went through COVID, listen, that thing would hit you. <laughs> and it hit me. And I knew the worst thing you could do is sit down and quit. Get up and move. And I had, uh, I would get out and, and walk just as far as I could walk. <laughs> out my door, down the end of the driveway, maybe down the street a few steps, just as far as I could walk. And I, what was I doing? I was doing it in the name of the Lord, yes. believing that my strength was being renewed. My strength was coming back. Uh, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. What am I doing? I'm, ta I'm releasing my words and faith to resist weakness, but I'm also rele I'm releasing my words and faith to bring to me the strength that I need. All right? Uh, Mark 3, 1 through 6. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there with a withered hand. Now, this would be a hand that's not up to full strength, wouldn't it? Right? So they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil or to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he looked around at them with anger, uh, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Was it the Lord's will to restore that use of that hand? Well, would it be his will for uh, Kyle's arms and hands to be restored to full use? Would it be his will for your knees to be restored to full use? Your hearing to be restored to full use. Absolutely. It is his will. Say, it is his will. It is his will. Top of that next page, too. <laughs> <laughs> this man had one hand that did not work like the other. It was the will of God to restore use of this hand, making it as whole as the other. If Jesus did this for one, he will do it for another. Amen. Now, see, sometimes we get to thinking that we're not like those people in Bible times. They were special cases. No, they weren't special cases. What he did for one, he'll do for another. What he did for them, he will gladly do for us. And we need to be convinced of that. Amen. You go through the Gospels and meditate in those healing uh, historical accounts. You need to remind yourself every time you read one, He'll do that for me too. What he did for the uh, woman with the issue of blood, he'll do that for me too. What he did for, uh, for uh, uh, blind Bartimaeus, he would do that for me too. What he did for the 10 lepers that he cleansed, he, he would do that for me too. You need to just say that till it becomes a reality that God is not a respecter of persons. What he did for one, he'll do for you too. All right, look at uh, Isaiah 35, 3 through 5. Now, this is an interesting passage. Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall, deaf shall be unstopped. Now, this is a passage that speaks of spiritual strength. But, uh, and it's quoted also over in the New Testament. But notice the analogy he makes here. Weak hands, feeble knees. We've already seen that a guy with a withered hand, he healed. 
And how many people that were lame or unable to walk or paralyzed did he heal? So uh, you could make a confession out of that. My hands are being strengthened. I am strong. I am not fearful. For the Lord has come to save me. Amen. Uh, so the first thing that you do is build and develop that faith for the fight by meditating on promises from the Word. Now, I gave you just a handful there, but notice I chose scriptures relating to strength. Relating to strength, because you need, you need strength to be restored. And listen, the Bible's full of those scriptures on strength and uh, that speaks against weakness. So you build your foundation. What is that doing? That's building my faith to know God does not want me to have weak hands. He wants me to have the use of my hands, as strong as they've ever been, that's what God's will is for you. Amen. Now, you can make this targeted to whatever your situation is. Next week, I'm not done, so don't get, don't get excited, all right? But <laughs> next week, unless the Lord deals differently, we're going to deal with depression, anxiety, and anything that would be uh, of the mind where the mind needs to be healed. And we're going to show you how to target that particular stream of healing and begin to build faith for that. So after you've meditating and building faith, uh, then you need to speak declarations of faith from these promises in the Word. And remember, if it is written, I can confess it or I can say it. So notice the first thing we're doing is looking to see what's written. And I just gave you a few scriptures on what was written about regaining strength, strength being renewed, strength being restored. Spend time first meditating in the Word on those, but then don't stop with just reading them and meditating. Begin to speak declarations of faith from promises. Now, here's some more. All right, y'all ready for a few more? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's strengthening me. I said, he's strengthening me. Amen. Say, Christ is, me. Christ is strengthening me. Ephesians 6, verse 10. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Notice the command there. Be strong in the Lord. And what I do with that is just walk around declaring, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My hands, my body is strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. CV version. Finally, let the, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. You know what you could turn that one and say? The mighty strength of the Lord is making me strong. The mighty strength of the Lord is making me strong. The mighty strength of the Lord is making me strong. You say it. Say it like Say, the mighty, the mighty strength of the Lord, of the Lord is making me, strong. making me strong. Can y'all feel the power in there? And it's not about feeling, but can't you sense something released when you say that? Amen. Say it again. Say, the mighty strength, the mighty strength of the Lord, of the Lord. is. Making me strong. The mighty strength of the Lord is making me strong. Now, I may not do a thing for you. It makes me want to take off and run. Not run off, just run up and down these aisles because it stirs something in here. Confessing the word stirs something within, and what happens within will impact. What's going on out here? Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have to get strong in here before you get strong out here. Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. Well, are you his people? Yes. Now we've got a promise. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Amplified, the Lord will give unyielding, impenetrable strength to his people, the Lord will bless his people with strength, with peace. Now, here's a confession out of that. The Lord is giving me strength 
I'm becoming stronger and stronger daily in the strength of God. I tell you what, this is working for me right now. <laughs> it's working for me. Is it working for you? Remember the message? It's working. Shout, it's working. By speaking these promises as declarations of faith, you're receiving and activating these covenant blessings in your life. If I can say it based on the word, I shall have it. And then number three there at the bottom. Remember, we started meditating in the word, building that faith. Then now we're declaring, making declarations out of it. Now, speak directly to symptoms and conditions using these scriptures. You can speak to your body. Your body will hear you. Now, it's interesting. When Jesus came to Peter's house or to the house where Peter was, Peter's mother-in-law was sick with what? A fever. And one of the uh, gospels specifically says it this way. He rebuked the fever. So the fever could hear. What Jesus said. And the fever left her, and the Bible says she got up and ministered unto them. But it, it doesn't say he prayed even to the Father to remove the fever. It says he rebuked the he talked to the fever. Now Jesus talked to things all the time. If he needed a storm to calm down, he said, Storm, peace. Be still. If he wanted something to happen with the tree that wasn't uh, bearing figs, what did he do? He spoke and cursed that tree and said, uh, no man shall eat fruit from you from hereafter. And the next day, the disciples were astonished and said, Master, look, that fig tree you cursed is withered. Jesus used his words. Used his words. And... Uh, we need to take the promises of God and speak to our condition as well. I can't tell you how many times I spoke to my blood cells, my bone marrow. Now, you won't do that unless you believe it's listening. But God created things to listen, apparently. I mean, he told the disciples, he said, e even the sycamine tree, or sycamore tree, some translated it out, he said, you could say to that tree, get up and be removed yonder, you know, and it would have to get up and obey you if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed. So apparently some think mountains can hear. <laughs> Somebody said, well, the mountains are circumstances that we're going through. I will buy that. That means your circumstances can hear. And it means they have to obey because Jesus said, if, if you have faith, the God kind of faith, you would say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. And it would, if you believe what you say would come to pass, that mountain would have to get up and obey you. So apparently there's some things out there that can hear what our words are saying. So I just believe that my bone marrow would listen. And I told my, barrel, my bone marrow, you better straighten up. And I quoted scripture and told that bone marrow, you've got to produce the right kind of blood, the right cells. Everything's got to be in perfection. Somebody said, did it happen overnight? Absolutely not. But it happened. Amen. You get anything out of this? Then catch these two. You're out of here. All right. Basic practices to assist in the healing process. Continue to do everything necessary in the natural realm to aid healing and strength. Kyle said that he was doing therapy or riding that bicycle six miles. God bless him. Amen. And, and the weights. You do those things. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Pray for, for your treatment strategy. Pray over that strategy. The exercise, the physical therapy, medication, whatever it is, and believe that all things are working for your good. Treatment plans, medications, and therapy. And, and that's where you have to begin to get a declaration. I believe this is working for me. 
uh, when, when I had a situation that arose with, with my, uh, one of my, the oncologists uh, who is now retired, and he told me, he said, we've got a wonderful medication that, that God has given to us that'll remedy that one situation that you've got going on. And uh, he said, but, you know, we'll be happy if we can get it to where, you know, your blood will be at 12. Your hemoglobin will be at around the 12 mark. We'd be real happy with that. You'll do well at that because you can function at 4 and 5. <laughs> but here's what I said. I said, it will work to the best beyond what it would do for someone else. Because God's going to take what it would do in the natural and put his strength behind it, and it will do more for me than what it would do for someone who isn't speaking life and health over it. So if I take medicine, I expect it to work 100% for my good with no side effects. That's what I expect. 100%. The best scenario will work for me. Then the last thing here, I would, if, if I was in, I, I'm believing for that restoration of strength. I keep doing everything you're doing, praying over every treatment, going that route, meditating in those scriptures on strength, speaking to my body to be strong, telling those hands, y'all be strong. You get your strength back. Talking and speaking and declaring. But here, here's a key one. We got to catch this last one. Stay in the atmosphere of faith and healing. Because there are atmospheres where they'll talk you out of that. Amen. So stay in a church where healing and faith are emphasized. Stay away from ministries that question the reality of healing today for God's people. They'll talk you out of faith and talk you into an early grave and call it God's will. Stay connected to people of faith that will encourage you and strengthen you and guard against fellowship with people who are carriers of negativity, doubt, and fear. And I, I, we'll, pick, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, there were certain people, you've heard me tell it, that I could not fellowship. Why? They were carriers. Not of faith. <laughs> of fear. And listen, let me just add this. I need to add this here. You can say, well, I'm stronger than that. That won't impact me. Let me just say this. I've been at this, like I said, I've been teaching these principles for 30 years. And I've been teaching you guys on this subject for many years. But if I had a situation going on and I've got my faith working in a situation... I recognize the danger of being in proximity to a spirit of fear, a carrier of fear, a carrier of unbelief. There's a difference in a negative statement every now and then. Some people, without even knowing it, are carriers of those spirits of fear. And they will impart to you and you'll go home after a visit, and two or three days later, this is what you'll say. Something just don't feel right. Something just don't seem right. I don't understand what it could be. And it could be that you were in the proximity of someone that was imparting something. So you've got to be selective when you're in a battle like this. And the Holy Ghost will warn you about places to stay out of. I had the Lord tell me two people I could not have conversation with. And they were good people. And unknowingly, they were imparting something. And when I would get around them, that residue of fear would remain upon me. And uh, I finally, by the direction of the Holy Ghost, I said, until this battle is finished, I won't have fellowship there. I will have very limited to no fellowship there because I could not afford for an open entry point for that thing to get an advantage. Faith comes by hearing. Fear comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Doubt and unbelief will come by hearing. So be careful what you hear.
Now, you take these other healing scriptures and meditate on them, all right? Did you receive anything out of this tonight? Did that, did that help, son? Because I know I'm out of time, but you remember back a year ago, I had the, the, the chronic situation going on with the severe allergies. I could not shake that until I started doing with that exactly what I just walked you through here tonight for strength. I had to get my scriptures out, and I had to meditate my healing. And then I had to release my words of authority, sword of the Spirit, to drive that thing out. You're using the sword of the Spirit to drive weakness out. And God wants that strength to flow freely into your body, and it will. It is. It is. It is. Hallelujah. Stand real quick. And... Uh, I, if you will, I, I, this is healing school, all right, but if you'll oblige me, and we can do this very, very quickly, is there anyone here tonight, you came in and you would like for me to lay hands on you in regard to healing? Is there anyone? This is school, we're training for healing, but if there's anyone here tonight and you really sense that you need hands laid on you tonight, I just sense we will do that. Come quick, real quick, okay? Let's, let's come real quick. We won't be lingering, but we're going to release the anointing. There is a healing anointing, all right? And it gets things done in a little different way, all right? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Sheila, praise the Lord. God's completing that, finishing that. And whatever's trying to work in that, to hinder that stops, that stops. Thank you, Jesus. I release the healing anointing, and I thank you that she is healed and infection free and supernatural healing and recovery is already at work here and the enemy will have no place to work there i thank you for it in jesus name hallelujah what's going on here back all right thank you jesus would you lay your hands on her back please i release that healing anointing for that and i speak strength and wholeness and correction and healing in the name of jesus Receive that. Take it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is where you, you, you say, when hands are laid on me, I receive my healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Left eye. Jesus. I just released that anointing right now. Yeah, thank you. There, there, there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. In the name of Jesus, the healing anointing corrects that, resolves that, and we'll hear about it. <laughs> In Jesus' name, we're going to hear about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Amen. Jo Joe, I do need to pray for you. Just step out real quick, and let me just release whatever. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there. Mm, there it is. Thank you, Jesus. Everything you need. It's there in that supply. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your hip. Praise the Lord. Carol, would you lay hands back here on her lower back? And we release that anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, you got it right there. Just take it now. Receive it. Your faith stirred you to step out. Now just release it further. That when hands are laid on you, there it is. Receive it. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for this service. Thank you for the teaching. Thank you for the word sealing in our hearts. Make it more real than ever before. Lord, we're so thankful that if we can see it in the word, we have a right to believe it, to confess it, and receive it. And shall we shall have it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday.